Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us this afternoon. This is our Survive and Thrive Summer Edition um, and today we're going to be talking about your health and college success and we have two wonderful staff members here today who are going to be giving you a wonderful amount of information. We have Joy who is out of the Office of Disability Services and we have Elizabeth who is out of the Office of Academic Advising and Transfer. It's really great that you guys are able to kind of sit in on this session, um, put a face with the name and be that one person that you know what stick already before you get here. And so just take a look at these young ladies here. They'll be able to kind of help you navigate um, through anything you come into contact with. So if you don't remember anything from this session, remember Elizabeth and Joy, right? They'll be able to help you out. So without further ado, ladies, the floor is all yours. Great, thank you so much, Kiota. Hi, everybody. Um, again, I'm Elizabeth. I'm one of the academic counselors here at STCC, and I just celebrated my eighth year here. And um, while I'm talking, I'm gonna share my screen. Joy, how long have you been here at uh, STCC? Uh, 18 years. 18, 18 years, okay. Fun, so you're having fun. You are pretty, uh, pretty settled. That's <laughs> awesome. Okay. So I can make this a little smaller too. And um, I do have a bunch of tabs open that I'll occasionally share with everybody while Joy's talking to further enhance the visual aspect of what she's saying. Um, and so if you have any questions, you can put them right in the chat. How do we get to the chat? Q&A, you would click on that if you have a question and it'll pop up on our screen, okay? All right, so with that said. I'll man the chat for you guys so you don't have to worry about it. Okay, great. Oh, thank you. Of course. All right, so again, I'm Joy Ferwarda and we're really thankful that you can join us today. And we thought we'd just open it up to see, um, first, you know, what comes to mind when you think of health? What is health to you? Anyone offer some, um, some thoughts on that? Put them right in the chat, low stakes. Give you a minute to type that out. Some of you may have already done that in your classes before, you used to chat. And maybe also think about why you chose this particular series. Perhaps health is important to you. Okay. Well, Kyoto, anything coming in on the chat? Sleep and healthy weight. Yep, we're, yeah, that, so. that's often what comes to mind um, for me. We're gonna touch upon some of those, uh, those aspects of health uh, shortly. I also say exercise is one that comes to mind. I'm writing these down. Great. Okay. So let me go to the next slide. So, yeah, we. Oh, sorry um, about that. We're going to talk about, um, we're briefly going to talk about some health recommendations for each uh, topic we cover. And each um, facet of health could have its own presentation. I mean, these are big topics. We're just gonna come up with a couple pointers and suggestions, um, just some healthy tips, um, hopefully that you can implement. Uh, maybe, maybe just one or two. Um, we realize it's, it's a lot to kind of change habits or build habits, um, but we're gonna touch upon some of these aspects. And then we're also gonna share with you resources at STIC that can help um, help facilitate health and well-being. So just as by way of introduction, we're, today we're going to cover uh, physical health, emotional and mental health, spiritual health, financial health, interpersonal health, and academic health. So we're just exactly. going to jump in with, yeah, physical health. <laughs> That's right. What didn't, was in the chat at the start? <laughs> super fast clicking over there. Didn't mean to do that. <laughs> so um, one of the first thing that 
things that comes to mind is, is what we eat. So we need fuel to function and it's not just for our physical um, body, but also um, our brain needs fuel so that we can think clearly. And so we just encourage you to eat regularly balanced meals. Um, you know, some people benefit from eating, you know, a time, uh, several small meals throughout the day. Others can spread those meals out, but eating regularly, um, eating balanced meals, which means um, proteins, uh, grains, fruits, and vegetables. Um, and I know I'm guilty of enjoying too many carbohydrates, uh, but you want to be mindful of, of what you're putting in your body, um, just in terms of how it's being fueled to, to do all the things that you need to do. As students, um, being a student is just one facet of your identity now, um, and you need to, uh, to, to be in a good position to, to kind of cover all the aspects of your life. So, um, you know, maybe planning ahead if you know you have a full day, packing some snacks um, that are healthier in nature so that when you're hungry, you have fuel and it's, and it's good, um, good nutrition too. So whether it's nuts or carrots or something, um, it's easier to eat healthy when you plan ahead. Um, I know um, vending oh, machines. Yeah, Joy, actually, I couldn't find my raise my hand icon. Oh. <laughs> but <laughs> one of the things that we do have on campus is it. this is also COVID pending is we do have a weekly farmer's market in the spring where you can buy local fresh produce. It's open to um, all of our students. And um, I just wanted to make a mention also, we have cafeterias, yeah. Nadim's, right? Right. Is, also, like um, some, yeah, healthy options, so. Yep, healthy options go a long way. Um, and in a related, uh, related thought, hy hydrating. So there's lots of selections for um, beverages. And again, always good to um, make water consumption, you know, um, a part of your habit, bringing a water bottle with you so it's in within reach or within sight just to promote um, keeping yourself hydrated. Again, that helps your brain function well. Uh, it helps with energy level. There's just multiple benefits from staying, staying well hydrated. Um, and then another thing that was brought up in the chat is sleep. And, and again, we realize that these are recommendations and people are in different seasons of life and Getting, you know, a lot of sleep every night may not be realistic, um, but again, we just want to promote um, some ideas to try and keep a sleep routine where you can get hopefully seven to nine hours of sleep. That's the recommendation for the, um, the average population between 18 and 65. Um, so yeah, maybe that means setting an alarm to try and go to bed at a regular time. Same thing, getting up at a regular time. Um, preparing yourself to wind down after a full day. So some examples of that might include um, turning down the lights, uh, refrain from looking at any screens. I know that's really challenging for some people because they're just so connected, but taking your eyes off a screen um, just gives you time to, um, your eyes to adjust, just you know, create an environment that your body's prepared to, um, to rest and rejuvenate for the next day, turn the lights down. Sometimes we like to take a shower at night or, um, or even just refraining from caffeine. You know, there's just little steps you can take to help, uh, help prepare your body for this time of rest that's so important. Um, and then, you know, as I may have mentioned earlier, a lot of these things are interconnected. So in a minute, we're gonna talk about exercise and it's, um, it's proven that, you know, people who are able to build and exercise then sleep better and also have improved mental health benefits as a result of that. So many of these um, topics that we're going to discuss are all kind of interconnected. So again, you know, exercise can um, be different for a lot of people. Find something that interests you. Um, even walking is beneficial. Yeah. And on the campus, if you have the opportunity to take um, some classes on campus this semester, we have a wonderful campus green, just beautiful, where you can step away. It's a good sized loop that takes you around the center of campus. It's scenic and just gives you an opportunity to get in a little walk, um, take in you know, the beauty around you. And so um, 
that's one option, but we also have fitness centers. So, oh, yeah. you know, sometimes hold that up. fitness centers can be quite costly. Um, and the beauty is this is one of the resources available to you at STCC. Um, it will be opening in August, so August 2nd, just around the corner. And um, there's cardio equipment, there's um, strength training equipment, free weights. Um, so really just a wonderful resource that you can use. And again, this is something you can build in to your day when you're already on campus um, and use the resource that is available to kind of help you towards this goal of um, maintaining health and, and wellness. And then on a Another related note about a, a campus resource Oops. is our wellness, um, health and wellness center. So, um, you know, if you're not feeling well, it's good to get medical attention sooner rather than later. I'm um, so sorry. And so we, um, we have our health and wellness center in building 19, which is staffed by Jonathan Miller uh, as our physician's assistant. And um, you can make an appointment and, um, you know, make, you know, if necessary, he can make referrals. There's area agencies um, that we have lists of. So again, another resource that's really convenient for students. Um, if they have any, you know, any medical concerns, um, they can visit uh, the wellness center in building 19 and make an appointment. And also this is where if you have to drop off your health, you can pick up or drop off your health forms for your physical, for your immunizations, if you have to do a Cori Sori background, that's all done through the Health and Wellness Center as well. And then finally, also related, um, obviously we're still um, contending with the COVID pandemic. And so um, if you have questions about how the college is handling procedures, we know there's things subject to change. We encourage you to keep an eye on our website with all the COVID protocols and procedures um, that we're doing just to keep you safe and the community safe. So that's regularly updated. Um, vaccines are available. Uh, I think Elizabeth just scrolled through that. I think it's on Thursdays. Um, so again, a wealth of information on our website just in response to COVID and the measures that we're taking um, to keep you and the community safe uh, as we weather this together. So. And now I think we're gonna change gears. Elizabeth is gonna talk a little bit about Title IX and mental health. Yes, great, thanks Joy, really helpful. I'll try to move this little bar thing down without clicking into something else. All right, well, that's not gonna happen. Okay, so I just want to mention Title IX because you may have heard about it um, during your new student orientation or you'll hear it around and I wanted to give you just a brief overview. So this is a law, Title IX, it was actually passed in 1972. It is a landmark federal civil rights law, meaning it's a national law that prohibits sex discrimination within education. Um, in addition to providing equal opportunities in athletic programs, Title IX also addresses sexual harassment, gender-based discrimination, and sexual violence. So when I first learned about Title IX, I thought that it meant that that was finally when uh, young women got to play on the college level sports, because prior to 1972, there was not funding for them to do so. So I just thought, great, that allows women the same opportunities as men as athletes, but it's much broader than that. It deals with all of those things that I put there in bold. Oops really having a time today. So um, STIC has a whole process in place to handle complaints of sexual discrimination or harassment. If you're experiencing any of these stalking, domestic or sexual violence, you can reach out to us. We also have built in legislation for pregnant and parenting students. So for example, if you have excused absence due to pregnancy or childbirth, um, from your doctor and it's required for you, it's necessary, um, then you can be allowed to make up academic work. You have that built-in protection through Title IX. Uh, Vanash Sin is our contact person. This is her email here and her phone number. I'm gonna move this picture up myself. Um, is 413-577-4667, okay? And so if you're a student who's experiencing any of these situations, um, 
please reach out to Vanish or myself or Joy. And you can also um, write on our website, we have this Title IX link where you can get more information. So click on that. And uh, since we're on the website, I just wanna show you a couple things here. This is our Title IX page. It tells you all about the different types of policies and then the procedures that will help protect you. And um, you can go and speak to uh, Vanesh and then um, Casey is also available. On our website, just so that you know, because I use this all the time, um, I use the search bar to look for anything. So things that we're talking about, you can find under student resources. So there's um, the Center for Access Services, which provides help with students for, with non-academic barriers, the Health and Wellness Center, we were just talking about mental health support, domestic violence resources. You can click on any of these and it will take you to a page with frequently asked questions and tabs that you can explore. And again, if you have any questions, you can just throw them um, right there in the chat. Okay. So. The other thing I want to talk about, and it's certainly tied into interpersonal health, is your emotional health and well-being, mental health. Um, I could, just like Joy could go on and talk about certain topics here, I too could just go on. Um, I'm a social worker and I used to work as an outpatient therapist for children and families. Um, and so I understand that some of the um, Vulnerabilities we had prior to the pandemic have certainly gotten worse for a lot of people and living a healthy balanced life isn't always easy. Many of us struggle with depression, anxiety, addictions and other mental health challenges that definitely uh, and directly impact the quality of our, our day to day lives. We were looking at some studies. Uh, this is just one statistic and this is of cases that are reported that 26% of Americans um, over the age of 18, so about one in four adults, so at least a couple of us in this webinar suffer from some kind of mental disorder in any given year. Um, in fact, many of us struggle with more than one mental disorder at a time. So for example, many people who struggle with depressive illness may also co-occur with substance abuse or anxiety disorders, just a whole big jumble. Um, so please know you're not alone. Uh, you don't need to struggle in isolation. That's a big issue for us with the pandemic. It's hard to ask for help, but we have a lot of great resources here on campus. Um, we have a counselor here who works for River Valley Counseling. It would be like if you were going over to their office and you were in the waiting room and then you would go and meet one-on-one -on -one with this person. It's doing telehealth right now, so a one-on-one -on -one Zoom. I don't know it's what's gonna happen in the fall, but certainly you can reach out to myself or Joy or ask us through a chat um, and we can give you more information. But to get started, you would reach out to Dave Fortin. Um, he's a licensed mental health clinician and he works in Joy's office. And this is his email right here, dcfortin at stcc.edu. This is his number. Um, and then we also put in a link for you in terms of being concerned about somebody else. So we have a way for students to anonymously uh, share a concern report. And so you click on that and it's going to take you right to report. And I'll show you how to find that in a minute on the website. But you can put in, you can ask to be anonymous when you speak with, I think maybe Kyoto Garcia's office would contact you or, or, or the Vice President Darcy Kemp. And you can fill in the information and, and talk about your concern and, uh, and then hit submit down at the bottom. It doesn't go on your record, nothing like that. Uh, faculty do it frequently for students when they're concerned. And then to find that on the website, I think the easiest way is just go to the search bar. I do that for everything. If you just wrote share a concern report, I'm guessing we're gonna get there in two or three clicks. So yeah, you could click on either one of these. I'm gonna click, it says reporting here. If you clicked on that, share a concern. And so you go over here and it'll take you right to that report. 
two clicks, pretty good. So that's one of the options that you have as well when we talk about our emotional health and well being. Okay. Okay, great. So I'm going to just sort of pull together what I was saying in that um, being able to be the best at your job as a student, as Joy started to say, involves many different types of health. And so she's now going to talk about spiritual well-being and, and what that means. So we realize that um, spiritual well-being means a lot of different things to different people, um, but it, it's definitely a, a dimension of health and well-being, especially um, because it acknowledges a desire for a, or a search for a deeper meaning in life. And for some, it helps them with clarity um, when it comes to making everyday choices and their actions that are more consistent with their beliefs and their values. Um, for others, spiritual well-being is directly related to their faith or their religion. Um, and so being grounded spiritually can help sustain people when life is upside down or unpredictable. So we certainly don't want to diminish um, spiritual health. And again, we realize that this is different for each person. Um, many aspects of spiritual health involve um, dedicating some time to either reflection, meditation, Bible reading, um, a variety of different things where people have just this designated quiet time or reflection time um, where they're mindful of their surroundings um, and it gives them time to focus. And so um, Elizabeth's going to tell us a little bit more specifically about mindfulness and um, kind of that that um, activity that accompanies um, quiet time. Great. Thanks, Joy. <clears throat> okay, so some of you might be practicing what's known as mindfulness without even knowing that that's what you're doing or that that was a name for what you were doing. So as the first little um, point, bullet point or arrow point there says, it's a powerful tool to help you stay calm, focused, and on track for academic success. Some of the benefits of mindfulness include feeling more calm and happy and relaxed, reducing your anxiety and depression, improving your focus, your concentration, which ultimately leads to your academic performance, sleeping better, and a stronger immune system. And so I came across this really nice site um, and I can put this in the chat as well. And don't worry, we're not expecting anybody to get into a lotus position <laughs> and start meditating. Um, as Joyce said, you know, the way we connect with our spiritual um, guide and, and spiritual health is personal for each of us. But basically, it's just being more present, learning to be in the moment and learning how to stay calm and focused, even when there are difficult things going on. And so, again, you don't have to practice meditation. It's really just a way for you to um, be in the moment. And so let me go back to the website for a second. And um, I will send the link to you because what it teaches you are ways to not even just meditation or deep breathing, but to really start to look at how you in your day-to-day -day life can start to connect to just being grounded in the moment. And that is really improving sort of the quality of your life. So let's see, zoom in. Did I get it? Oh, I really zoomed a little too much that way. <laughs> okay. So again, what mindfulness means for you in your day-to-day -day life does not have to be some big activity connected to social justice or changing the world. It can be a very personal thing where, for example, I learned how to not get upset, how to be less upset, <laughs> less stressed out when I'm in traffic or running late for things. I could feel, and many of you feel, your uh, you get biochemical changes in your body. So it might come that you start to feel it in your neck or your stomach, or you might, um, have a need to, you know, try to modulate that by taking on some not good behavior. So these are ways to take that energy and consider 
talking, walking, dancing, singing. You could go in pilgrimage, you could volunteer. You can just sit in silence. Some people journal, some people are creative, some people like to be still. It's all about you being aware and grounded. And it's hard to do that when you have children and you are going to school and you're commuting or you're working two jobs um, and you're dealing with people who have COVID. All of that is a lot to go through. And sometimes school seems like the thing that maybe has to be sacrificed. This is a way mindfulness for you to carve out time to just sort of ground you and be prepared for the next amount of responsibilities that you have. So I'll just give you guys a moment to look at that. And again, just a reminder that you have your own ways to practice mindfulness. You know, sometimes it might just be when you're at the grocery store or, you know, at the end or the beginning of your days to just practice your thankfulness and your groundedness. And the more you practice it, the easier it gets. Okay, so let me escape that. Okay, so that's a pretty big switch because I'm going to go from being mindful and staying grounded to talk about another way that you can stay grounded and mindful. And that is around this next aspect of health, which is financial health. Kudos to Joy for the nice piggy bank graphic. <laughs> um, it is never too soon to start planning for your future um, and working with what you have, creating a budget. Uh, we do have resources here on campus that uh, can help you with financial literacy. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, career resources. Uh, we have a free business class, Business 105, and I did pull up that description. So let me just show you guys that. Business 105 is about personal finance and it allows you to make smart decisions about your money that will lead to long-term, hopefully, financial security. So the topics of this class include financial goal setting, budgeting, what you buy as a consumer, your savings, credit cards, debt, student loans. Some of you are dealing with that, I'm sure. Um, regular personal loans or home loans, investments, real estate, insurance, and retirement planning. All of that is in Business 105. And what's so great about Business 105 is that um, it is a free class, as we said, and there is a textbook, but it is paid for through a grant by Guardian Insurance. And students wouldn't necessarily know about that unless they connected with an advisor. Um, so it's something to think about. It may or may not go to your program. So certainly you would wanna talk about it with an advisor, but as general studies students, you're good with that class. Um, and then financial aid, very important to give it a go, at least to see if you would qualify. Um, you never know the federal government has reported that a lot of money goes unused through their um, educational funds. And so on our website, you can find a video and a whole page dedicated to financial aid. And so um, you can watch the videos up through here. And this is our financial aid office in building 19. Um, and you know, all kinds of resources here that you might not know about unless you went to the page. And this allows you maybe some ways to pay for school that you didn't even know existed. So give it a go. It's, um, you know, you have to go through page by page. The, um, there's a way for the IRS to put in all your tax information right through the um, application. And uh, you can uh, write to their office. You can reach financial aid through the chat. And you can also email um, Brendan Poner, really nice guy, has dealt with every kind of situation. Financial aid is person by person, and that's their motto in their office. And so he'll be able to help you as the financial aid literacy counselor. And then also, lastly, about your financial health in terms of how paying for school, you may want to consider taking some time and looking for a scholarship. 
Yes, it is true that scholarships are hard to get, but there are also a lot of scholarships that are very specific to people and their circumstances. And so it requires some time and exploration. We do have a scholarship page that you can explore. And um, you also might wanna check with your employer to see if they do any kind of um, educational assistance or scholarships, grants or anything like that. And so on our scholarship page, these are some of the very happy recipients. It just takes, walks you right through how you go ahead and start to look at the scholarships. Um, and then there's different links to different places where you can continue to look at them. Um, so again, that's just some time and investment. When my son was going to college, he, I would encourage, he might say nag, but I would encourage him to consider applying for scholarships because even if it takes you an hour or two, it could you, yield you several hundred dollars and that's certainly worth your time, right? Most definitely. Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> okay, so we are now have talked about physical health, um, our emotional health, our financial health, our spiritual health. Um, and now Joy is going to start to talk a little bit more about the interpersonal side of things. Yeah, so everything up until this point was pretty personal. And now um, we certainly don't want to leave out um, that we were born social beings. And there's a lot to be said about um, our social well-being. Being part of a community um, has numerous benefits. Um, it gives us a sense of belonging and security. It, um, it helps our mental, our mental health. And so now we're going to talk a little bit about some of the opportunities to be connected at STIC um, a bit more socially. I mean, many of these programs also have an academic component, but it's important to know what's available. So much of what we're gonna talk about is done through our Student Activities and Development Office. Um, Elizabeth has included the link, but we're gonna talk briefly about um, some of these different aspects of community within STIC. And um, yeah, hopefully you'll find something that resonates with you and that you're interested in learning more about. So we're gonna start with um, student clubs. We have clubs based upon major. So perhaps if you're a business major, or um, a nursing major. I have so there clubs. are a variety of clubs based upon major. We also have clubs that are based upon maybe your experience, veterans clubs, um, faith-based clubs, uh, or even interests. If you're a gamer and you wanna join with other gamers, you can do that. Or if you have an appreciation um, for knitting. So you can see there's quite a list there. Um, but if there's something that you're interested in that doesn't exist, um, you can still contact the Student Activities Office and tell them, hey, I'm really interested in starting this club, and they'll tell you what's involved. So um, it fluctuates a little bit from semester to semester based upon student interest, um, but certainly see if there's something that you'd like to uh, participate in or perhaps something you'd like to start. Um, so yeah, beyond the clubs, we also have a um, student ambassador program. So this is something, um, it's more of a leadership role where you can um, help new students, you help with new student orientation. Um, it's just a, a, an opportunity to um, promote student success and help other students kind of get familiar and be comfortable. Um, with being students. So again, this is kind of a leadership role, which um, is really great for um, just developing your skills and, and also being a blessing to, to other students. Um, we also have different um, community opportunities uh, or uh, outings. Now, admittedly, last year that didn't quite happen like it once did, but we um, have offered opportunities for people to go to New York City and um, or the Boston Red Sox. Yeah. So these are great. You know, maybe you don't have the opportunity to go otherwise. You don't have transportation. Um, so be on the lookout. The um, college has a newsletter called the Stickler, mm -hmm. um, where much of these types of activities and updates um, are shared. So you, you can be aware and mark your calendar if any of these um, appeal to you. Yeah, seriously, you guys, they had, um, again, pre-COVID, so we'll see what's going to happen, 
but uh, there would be a trip to New York City for Christmas shopping, right? They would load up some buses from Stick. It would be a set price for the day. You'd have the whole day. You just have to leave. You know, you got to be on the bus by a certain time to go back. Um, but it, it was a great opportunity for people to go to New York at a really inexpensive price. And those are some of the activities that Joy is referring to. And it's fun just to have those opportunities beyond the academics, you know, doing some of those, those fun things too. Absolutely. So, um, other opportunities lie oh, with sorry. student government. So <laughs> there are three uh, formal leadership positions that are elected each year. So we have a student body president, a student body vice president, and a student body trustee. So if you um, would like to have a voice and, um, you know, be part of some of the decision making and the opportunities, that might be an opportunity you want to pursue. So, um, yep, Elizabeth brought up um, some the the website related to that. So, um, again, more of a leadership role, but a wonderful wonderful opportunity to have a voice in a lot of the the um, you know the happenings um, for the students, and also a voice um, with the board. And then we also wanted to touch briefly. Um, we know we've already spent all this time telling you about all these healthy habits, many of which take time. Um, we don't want to diminish that. We'll talk about that momentarily. But if you have time to volunteer, again, something that is beneficial, not only to the people you are helping, but um, definitely there are personal benefits to being a volunteer. Again, it's that sense of community, that sense of purpose, um, improved um, mental health, less anxiety, depression. So. Again, um, with some of these organizations that we've already talked about on campus, there may be some volunteer opportunities, but that doesn't mean you can look for other opportunities within your community um, with, uh, you know, perhaps an animal shelter or a food bank. Um, but again, if we certainly understand, but if you have time, just a couple hours, maybe once a month right. um, might be something that, you know, will definitely facilitate your, your social well-being too. And your and spiritual, then, and your spiritual. And your spiritual, and yes, sense. yes. Again, all interconnected. Um, and then finally, we also wanted to highlight our Office of Multi Multicultural yeah. Affairs, which um, Vanetta Lightfoot has um, been very faithful at engaging many dynamic speakers um, who have a variety of different experiences and backgrounds. And it just really celebrates um, their, their experiences, their wisdom, and celebrates the diversity um, of our campus, our community, and our world. And so um, there's already, Elizabeth is showing just a, a lengthy list of all types of um, events. Uh, last year, they were, they were remote. Um, but prior to that, you know, speakers would come to campus, and we'd get some really um, phenomenal speakers. Some, um, this woman, I think Elizabeth was going to, I forgive me, I forgot forget her name, but she, um, uh, Ruth Carter, Ruth Carter. Yeah. Was From part Springfield. Of, yeah. She's local and, and she's, um, quite a talented, uh, individual and did, um, period work on, I'm, I'm not a comic, but <laughs> the Black Panther. Uh, she movies. did the costumes for yeah. the Black Panther and Selma and the Butler. Yeah. She's won awards and she came to stick and, and shared her and that's Vanetta. Yeah, exactly. Great. Okay. So, so now shifting to the academic. Oh, I got ahead of myself, the time management. So that's academic. As, and yeah, it's very much related. Um, so again, we've talked about all these uh, recommendations, healthy tips, but if you have difficulty <laughs> fitting them in your day, um, they're not as helpful as maybe they should be. So um, we understand that it takes discipline and, and perhaps some assistance to structure your day or your week to set aside time for meditation, to set aside time for exercise, um, whatever the case may be, just to maybe try and get one good night of sleep during the week. So um, some people can do that by using a calendar or agenda. Some use their phone. Um, but we also want you to know that we have a wonderful um, asset in our Student Success Center. Nicole Jackson is our Student Success Coach, and she helps students with a variety of things, um, but she also helps with time management. So 
you can make an appointment with her, um, tell her that, you know, you, you want to um, just be successful with your, you know, your study schedule, your homework, or whatever the case is. We understand that many students have lots of responsibilities. They're not just a student. They're moms. They're, you know, they're caregivers. They um, have jobs. There's just so many things. And so Nicole is available to help you kind of brainstorm, you know, how much time you have in a day and then how you can Im implement all the things you would like or would attempt to do, you know, perhaps it's in a week. So um, mm -hmm. she's a wonderful resource in our student um, success center. Mm -hmm. And, um, oh, on a related note too, um, sometimes, you know, just getting started, it's reflect on the time that you have that maybe isn't used as, um, as efficiently as you like. I know mm -hmm. sometimes people get you know, binge watch their show and then there goes a couple hours. Yeah. YouTube. Um, <laughs> YouTube. Yeah. Or yeah, just different social media. You think you're just going to check one thing and then um, more time than you want to admit has passed. So be aware of things that kind of zap all your, your extra time and think like, hmm, could I use this time in a way that's just going to contribute to my well being a little bit more? So that's worth considering too. And Joy, you mentioned the academic calendar, and I just wanted to pull this up for students. Um, well, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the website and show you how to find it. Um, so the, the oh, sorry. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. I was going to let you pull yeah. it up. But. Yeah. You go, Joy. So the academic calendar, um, as you can see, it's right on our homepage. Um, I, I, wonderful resource. The earlier you get familiar with it, the better. Um, this is going to share all the important dates the whole academic year. So anything related to when just when do classes start? When is my bill due? When do I meet with an advisor? And then there's other things that we want to highlight, like holidays. Like who doesn't like a holiday? Um, but what's really significant, not only do you get a day off when there's a holiday, but chances are your schedule is going to change. So Elizabeth has her mouse on just below Columbus Day. So that's Tuesday, uh, Monday, October 11th. Yeah, I'll make um, so the college is closed. But then on Tuesday, October 12th, even though it's really a Tuesday for the rest of the world, at STCC, you're going to take your Monday classes. So that's something to keep an eye on because it can kind of sneak up on some students. But if you access this calendar and make note of it, whether you highlight it or make a note in your phone, um, you'll be prepared when these things come along. Um, just because so many holidays do happen to fall on Mondays, they try and like even things out a little bit. Right. So that's just like one. I mean, if you look now, there's all sorts of things with draw deadlines and um, mm -hmm. Fine. we could spend yeah. a lot of time on this, mm -hmm. but yeah. um, just know where it can be found um, because it's a, it's a resource that you'll return to time and time again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really important. Okay, great. So, yeah, great. That brings us to communicate. So as if we haven't shared enough with you already. We're communicating. Um, <laughs> we realize it can be overwhelming. And uh, quite frankly, you may say like, I know they talked about this, but I kind of forget. Mm -hmm. um, so in cases like that, uh, just reach out. You can reach out to Elizabeth or myself. Um, there's so many people that just really want to see you do well, be successful, and we have a multitude of supports available. We're going to touch upon those momentarily. Um, we want you to know that they're available, so just reach out um, because chances are if you need a support, we have it, and um, we want to make sure that you know how to access it. So speak up, ask questions. Um, again, we have all these departments for a reason. And we really want to help connect you to all the resources that will help you be successful. And then, it's, yes, yeah. Do you want to cover this, Elizabeth? Okay, sure. So, um, so one of the things that you're going to see in the corner of all of the pages on our website is this button that says "Chat Now," and I'll show you that in a minute. And when you click on that button, what it does is it takes you during business hours to a live page. And you're gonna see that all of these offices are currently open waiting for students to ask them questions. Okay, so if you have a question about your financial aid, 
uh, making a payment plan, whatever it might be, you're going to write your name here and your student ID number. Um, if you don't have your student ID number, then you'll be asked some other ways to identify yourself. Um, but that's always going to be at the top of your schedule as well, your student ID number. And then you're going to ask your question, you know, blah, blah, blah. When does my aid come in? Do I have a book voucher? Can I make a payment plan? And then you hit start chat, you know, for any of these offices. And then what will happen is you can start typing back and forth in real time, actual time with um, somebody from one of these offices. And if we don't know the answer, we can get you to somebody who does, okay? And again, that is on every page. There it is on Vanetta's page. But if we were to go over to the student resources and go over to the access here, oh, there it is. And, you know, if we go back over here to look at classes. There it is. It's like a pesky little sibling. And you just <laughs> click on it and uh, and then you can make it bigger and then ask your question. So that's just one of the best ways um, to communicate with somebody at STIC in actual time. Okay. Okay. And finally, we're going to talk about academic wellness naturally, um, because we want you to, you know, consider all those other aspects to improve your well-being, but um, we want to make sure that you're aware of all the supports we have to assist you as a student. So as Elizabeth mentioned in Kyoto too, Elizabeth is part of our academic advising department. So if you haven't already, you will be assigned an academic advisor who will guide you through the process of selecting classes. We know that can be daunting and, and the academic advisors actually do so much more. Um, they wanna learn what else you have going on in your life because it isn't just jump in, be a student, that's it. There's just many things to consider. If you have a long-term goal of transferring, if you want to explore different career options, um, and Elizabeth can explain better than I, um, but yeah, there's just, you have someone to guide you. You don't have to figure out. In fact, we recommend not trying to necessarily do yeah. your own advising um, because you, you don't know what they know. Um, they've been doing this a long time. They know what classes make sense to take first because other classes build. Um, or if you are considering two different majors, you know, taking classes that would be beneficial for both. So you really um, want to make every effort to meet with your advisor in a timely manner, just so that you're in the best um, position to get the classes you want, the classes that you need, and to, you know, be prepared for the, the semester ahead. Right, and you can always just reach out to advising through the chat too, and that would get you to any of our advisors as well. And um, additional advising support comes through TRIO, support, um, Student Support Services, and that's a federal program that works with um, students who they are eligible, can receive additional supports and all kinds of goodies. They have all kinds of swag over there in TRIO, um, but it's often for first students who are the first in their family to go to college. Um, there are students who can meet some economic eligibility standards. What else am I forgetting, Joy? Um, they can help sometimes with um, access codes for some materials, typically for um, first generation students who haven't previously attended um, right. college. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of resources. It's worth um, getting connected. Um, there is an application, but they have, um, again, academic advising. They have additional tutoring beyond what the college offers. So mm -hmm. um, certainly look into uh, TRIO if, you, if you'd like to learn more about additional support and Elizabeth had, has included the, um, the email there. Mm -hmm. We had talked briefly about the Student Success Center. That's where Nicole Jackson works. The um, woman who is the success coach and can help with study skills, time management, all sorts of things. Um, so our tutoring is, is housed, well, some of it is housed within the Student Success Center. So we offer tutoring in all the basic subjects, mm -hmm. um, whether it's English or math or psychology or history, the classes that nearly everyone has to take. Um, but if you don't see tutoring for the class you're in, you can reach out to them and they will work on seeing if tutoring is available for the subject that you would like. So um, again, a, another resource eager to be of service. Um, 
We also have NetTutor, which is another party beyond STIC that we contract with. So they are available evening and weekends. And um, that information is on, um, on the website. I think Elizabeth's going there now. Um, All of these subjects. So if you are struggling, as I did, I won't bore you with the sad story of my trying to get through statistics, but um, you could drop in right now and meet with a tutor or wait in waiting room if they're with another um, student. You can drop off a question. Um, you can make an appointment when there's no tutors available. And that's across the curriculum. You can drop off your essays. Um, there's a writing and paper center over here. And so this is, again, just another uh, one of the uh, resources that we have here. Act the and then um, we have additional tutoring through our STEM center. So that's focused more on the science, technology, engineering, and math classes. Mm -hmm. um, but again, more, more support. We have a writing center, which is primarily staffed by peer tutors. Um, so you can go to the writing center if you have to write a paper for psychology or history or any class. It's not just for students who are in English classes. And um, they will help you with whatever phase of the writing process you'd like help. So maybe you're having difficulty brainstorming a topic, or maybe you have your topic, but you're not sure how to organize your thoughts. Mm -hmm. They can assist with all the different um, aspects of, of writing. Um, and then there's um, disability services. And I'm one of the counselors in that office. So we want to make sure that students know that if you have a documented disability and provide us with that documentation, we may be able to provide you with additional support in the form of academic accommodations. So an example of an accommodation would be um, like longer time for testing or perhaps permission to record lectures, um, getting a copy of class notes. Um, so it all depends on the student's disability documentation, but the first step is to provide us with that documentation, um, and then we'll review it, and then the counselor will reach out to you just to set up an appointment, and then we can um, coordinate a time to meet and talk through how we can support you additionally while you're at STIC. And yes. then... Um, and, and, and as a faculty member, when students have an accommodation plan, um, not only are we legally bound to uh, follow that plan, but it's, it, it's a great way to make sure that you're learning, that you're getting everything you need to be successful in the class. And so, of course, we support that. So there's never any kind of problem with submitting those accommodations that way. And then we also have the library filled with um, very helpful, friendly librarians to help you in any aspect. If you're you know, looking for resources or need help with some research, um, the library has several librarians on hand um, to, to offer assistance. Um, if you need a Chromebook or a hotspot, um, they are also assisting in that regard. Um, there is all that yeah, information that Elizabeth is showing us now from their website. Um, so those, um, those are just another level of support through, through the library. And then finally, um, the Center for Access Services uh, is a remarkable um, department that helps pretty much with everything that's not quite academic. So um, if you are having difficulty um, with housing, they can help you connect with community agencies. If you are having difficulty getting food, um, we, I just learned have a rather elaborate um, food pantry that has not only food, but also um, kind of personal needs, um, you know, basic um, hygiene products, all the, the kind of basics of, of daily living so they can assist with. Um, if perhaps you don't have enough money to cover a textbook, maybe financially covered so much and you're still a little bit short, you can reach out to CAS and they may be able to help you. So um, they have a variety of um, supports, like things that they can help you with on campus, but they also have community partners that can, um, can they can connect you with as well to help you with whatever, you know, kind of non-academic need you may have. 
Yeah, it's a, it's a really good resource and we're so fortunate to have it on campus. So we're just about almost up with our time. And so we wanted to make sure that we built in a little bit of time for any questions that you might have. I'm gonna stop sharing um, or any feedback, anything you wanna say. Well, we thank you. Yes, thanks for joining us. And uh, don't hesitate to reach out. We're here for your success. Thank you so much for joining us. And I wanna thank Joy and Elizabeth for just giving that wealth of information um, to us, very valuable information. And lastly, I just wanna do a quick plug for our career coach system that we have here at STIC. This is a free service to everyone. So if you just go around on the website and go to career coach, you'll be able to search for local jobs, look at career paths as well. Um, you'll be able to create a resume, cover letters, all free of charge. Um, so you'll be able to kind of see what your major um, would look like and how that can translate into a career later on. Um, and also show you the steps that are needed in education wise in order to get to the career that you are looking to get to. So definitely a wonderful tool. You can do an assessment that can kind of um, see what your interests are and where that may lay with um, a career. So definitely check it out. Um, again, it's free, which is, you know, the saying, if it's free, it's for me. So go ahead and check it out and um, definitely utilize the resource. And again, we just thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. We hope that you found the presentation valuable and we invite you to just check out our other topics that we have coming up this summer um, and just go ahead and register for anything that you think will be of interest um, and we'll sure that you'll be able to get some valuable information. All right, have a great afternoon, everyone. Take Bye. Care. Bye, thank you. Bye.